you are welcome to Day Tutor Academy where we feature free video tutorials to help you understand the fundamentals of mathematics and the science subjects. We have comprehensive solutions to numerous past questions from various exams including WAHEC, NECO, GCE, JAMBUTME, GED and IGCSE. These are aimed at preparing you to ace your exam with flying colors so that you can successfully build that great career you have always longed for. All you have to do is to just subscribe to Data Academy and turn on that notification bell so as to set yourself on a path to excellence. And with that, we can head over to our video for today, okay? Here yeah, in this question, we are told to copy and complete the table of values for the relation y is equal to 4x squared minus 8x minus 21 for values of x ranging from minus 2.0 to 4.0 that's the meaning of this inequality expression that minus 2.0 is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to 4.0 so these are the entries that they want us to work with for the values of x so these are some of the values of y that have been computed already we are to copy that table and fill in these gaps all right so our work is quite easy to do that since Almost half of the entries have been filled for us. We can easily do that. But I'm not going to be using the calculator to generate this table. We've done some videos on how to use the calculator to automatically generate the values to populate your table when you are working with graphs like this, especially in this type of quadratic graph, even for trigonometric graph. But here, we are going to get our hands dirty. I said that at the beginning of the video, we are going to get our hands dirty. Okay. So we'll be working this just straight. I will show a tabular format and then just how to also put in the entries as needed. All right. Then further to that, we have to use a scale of two centimeters to one unit on the x axis and two centimeters to represent five units on the y axis to draw the graph for the relation y is equal to four x squared minus eight x minus twenty one. The fact that we have been given the scale to use go a long way to simplify the question for us that means we just know the scale we will abide by that scale but then this b2 is going to be quite interesting we have to use the graph to find the solution set of this i want to clarify that before going ahead to populate the table we are told to use the graph now that is the key point the same graph that we plot for y is equal to 4x squared minus 8x minus 21 we are going to use the same graph to solve to find the solution for these particular two equations that we are given and now let me just put us through the guide that will help us to use that graph to solve for it originally we are giving we are giving y to be 4 x square minus 8x minus 21 but here in question 2 alpha in question 2 alpha what we have here is 4x square minus 8x is equal to 3 all we need to do to make sure that we can use the same graph to solve this particular equation is to make sure that y reflects in this particular expression that we are given so our process is going to just ensure that we are going to manipulate this equation and reflect y in it and i want to just follow with what i'm going to do looking at this equation i have a left hand side and a right hand side and looking at y you can see that 4 square is here we have 4 square here minus 8x is here we have minus 8x here but minus 21 is missing and for me to bring in minus 21 i can just say to this equation subtract 21 from both sides okay if i'm doing that to both sides that means that i'm doing it to the left hand side and to the right hand side i can say subtract 21 or add minus 21 those are the same thing so if i'm to do that that will imply that i will have something like this 4 square minus 8x then i want to subtract 21 minus 21 okay is equal to 3 again minus 21 what I'm doing to the left hand side, I'm also doing to the right hand side. And if you look at this critically, if I'm to move this minus 21 to the left hand side, it will be minus 21 plus 21, and that will be zero. 
and I will have this original equation. So I'm on track with what I'm doing, and I know that this will imply that this equation will now become something suitable such like this. We have the left hand side now. Look at it. Is that not the same thing as y? That is now y. Okay, so this is y, and I can easily just say this means that y is equal to what is 3 minus 21? 3 minus 21 is minus 18. So y is minus 18. This is going to be a straight line graph because it's a constant, not depending on x. And I can easily get that on the graph. And the point of intersection with this particular quadratic is what is going to be the root, the solution to this particular one. So let's do the other one. Let's do this beta, in which now we are giving 4x square minus 7x minus 21 is equal to 0. Again, we are looking for a means of translating this equation to reflect y, which was the original equation that we are working with. And if you look at it critically, the first term, 4x square, this is also 4x square, those are the same. The last term, minus 21, this is also minus 21, those are also the same. But looking at the second term, you have minus 8x and minus 7x. What do we need to do to this minus 7x to reflect minus 8x? It's as simple as just subtracting x from both sides. Because if I say minus 7x minus x, that will be minus 8x. But what I do to the left hand side, I must also do to the right hand side. So I can say subtract x from both sides of the equation. These are the guidelines that will help you to effectively solve this question. Students run away from it, but it's as simple as this. So I'm going to have 4x square minus 7x, and then the x I want to subtract, minus x minus 21, is equal to 0 minus x, okay? And if I'm to work on that, that means what I'm going to have is 4x square minus 7x minus x, that is 4x square minus 8x. And 4x square minus 8x minus 21, that is y. So I can say this is y is equal to minus x. Okay. So these are the two new graphs that we need to actually plot on the graph of y is equal to 4x square minus 8x minus 21. And the point of intersection will be the solution to this particular one. So having cleared this, I can now go to copy and complete the table of values and then plot my graph. I hope you are ready for that. Okay, let's go. Now, this is a breakdown of the table that we are given initially that is now reflecting all the inputs of the equation. We have four square, and you can see this four square is four square. We have minus eight x. This is minus eight x, and we have minus twenty one. This is minus twenty one. Okay. So, what we are going to do is that. All of these entries, we are going to be putting them into this table, leaving out the ones that have been done initially for us. We just focus on those ones that are yet to be done. But first, I want to confirm with the first case so that you can see that what was gotten and what was given to us, and what we are going to be going to, and what we will be working with. And what we'll be working on are actually going to be the same, okay? So here, in this, in the first case, we have when x is equal to minus 2, x squared will be minus 2 raised to power 2. And we know that that is 4, okay? Now, that 4, that 4 times 4, that is 16. So here, we will have 16, all right? Then minus 8 multiplied by x will be minus 8 multiplied by minus 2. Minus times minus will become plus. 8 times 2 will become 16. So here we also have 16. Minus 21 is not taking any value of the variable. So it's a constant. And in short, throughout all of this row, all the entries are going to remain the same. And they will retain minus 21 as a value. So the task before us is to say, if you want to add 16 plus 16 minus 21. Because we want to add this total column now in blue the values in blue that's what we need to add that will be 16 plus 16 is 32 and 32 minus 21 that will be 2 minus 1 is 1 and 3 minus 2 is 1 that will be 11 so you can see that is why here they gave us 11 as 
that initial value so it is this format that we're going to use to compute all of the other values and i'll just do some two examples and then i'll populate the table so that we can move on with the question okay so now let me take this particular first entry we have minus 1.5 first we need to find the square of minus 1.5 so we can say in short let's just put the 4 multiply by it also 4 multiply by minus 1.5 raised to power 2 okay that's what is going to come here so if i take my calculator 4 multiply by minus 1.5 raised to power 2 is what that is 9 okay so this is 9 so this value here will be 9 then minus 8 times minus 1.5 now this is the same as if we are saying minus 8 times minus 3 over 2 because 1.5 is 3 over 2 so the negative sign we multiply each other to become plus 8 times 3 over 2 will be 4 times 3 and that will be 12 okay that's how you work minimally without engaging the calculator again and again and here i told us minus 21 is a constant that we need to repeat and here we have minus 21 so we need to add all of these three so that we can get the value for y and if we do that 9 plus 12 that is 21 21 minus 21 this is zero all right so that is how to go about getting this particular value so you can see how we go about just finding those values maybe i should just pick one more okay so now let's look at minus 0 0.5 now i want to find 4 multiplied by minus 0 0.5 raised to power 2 minus 0 0.5 is itself minus 1 over 2 okay so if i square that that will be that will be 1 over 4 and if i multiply by 4 the 4 will cancel and i'm going to have 1 so that is 1 okay so here minus 8 times minus 0 0.5 like i said before 0 0.5 is like half the negative sign will multiply each other to become plus 8 times 1 over 2 that will be 4 all right and then here i told us is a constant of minus 21 and if you just go ahead to sum everything 1 plus 4 that is 5 5 minus 21 that will be minus 16 okay that will be minus 16 so that is the way to go about doing all of those alternatively if you want to make use of the calculator you can just make a single point entry i just want to do this so that we can move on with it um, on our calculator we can input this particular equation and say 4x raised to the power 2 then let me come out of that minus 8x minus 8x and minus 21 minus 21 then we can use the calc button to put in all the various values of x for example in this case when x is 1 i can just say calculate what is the value of x just take 1.0 as the value of x and then you can see that is giving me that when x is 1.0 the value for y is minus 25 so i can say this is minus 25 and then again when x is 1.5 i can just say calculate i will just change the value of x here 1.5 and that is equal to what that is minus 24 so you can say this is minus 24 okay and then when x is 2.5 i can just say calc 2.5 then equal to x is 2.5 and y is what y is minus 16 so this is minus 16 all right when x is 3 3.0 can say calc 3.0 then y will be minus 9 and you can see that was done initially and that was correct and i can just do the final one when x is 4 i can just calc 
for x is equal to 4.0 then y will be 11 so this will be 11 i deliberately did that so that you can have a feel of whether you want to do your calculation stepwise or you want to use the calculator to quickly solve for that and um, as a diy just go ahead and populate all these other points and confirm that all the answer we got okay is also what you will get when you are working directly without using the calculator or using the calculator to input the function that is how you beat proficiency in generating this table so having this now we can go and input all of this into the table so i have zero here minus nine then minus 16 when x is one y is minus 25 when x is 1.5 y is minus 24 when x is 2.5 y is minus 16 and when is when x is 4.0 y is 11 so this table we now we've copied and we've completed it we can now go ahead to draw our graph but before we go ahead to start plotting the graph you recall that here for this alpha we say y is equal to minus 18 but for this particular case, we said y is equal to minus x, okay? Now, if y is equal to minus x, we also need the table of values for this particular y being equals to minus x, okay? So, that means you also need to note that um, y for y being minus x, we also need some data values. For example, in the first case, when x is minus 2, what will be minus x? That will be minus minus 2 like i used to say the negative signs will multiply each other and that will give us 2.0 okay when x is 1 minus 1.5 y will be 1.5 when x is equal to minus 1 y will be 1.0 okay in short because it's just negating it all the values of y will be the negative values of x here it will be 0 0.5 and then 0 will not carry any sign but when x is 0 0.5, y will be minus 0 0.5. When x is 1, y will be minus 1.0. When x is 1.5, y will be minus 1.5. When x is 2.0, y will be minus 2.0. When x is 2.5, y will be minus 2.5. When x is 3, y will be minus 3.0. When x is 3.5, y will be minus 3.5. And when x is 4, y will be minus 4.0. This particular table, we also need to note the cost will be making use of it also okay so i'm just adding that for you to be well prepared for all the table of values so now with all the information that we have been given and all the calculations that we have deduced up to this point we need to go ahead to plot our graph as requested now we've been given the scale and that is as shown here you can see that the scale that we are to use we have generated our table of values for y is equal to 4s square minus 8s minus 21 we have known that the very first equation we asked to solve amounted to y is equal to minus 18 and the second amounted to y is equal to minus x so all of this we are going to start putting on the graph now looking at the scale that we are giving and the table of values that we have we need to locate the central point of the graph that will make sure that the graph we are going to plot is going to be centralized it's not going to skew to the right to the left up or down okay so here we are just told two centimeters to one unit on x axis two centimeters to five units on y axis so if i just want to make some rough scale here we have minus two to four so two centimeters to one unit will mean that let's say i have minus two here this is minus one zero one two three four you can see now i'm tilted towards this left and i see i have space here can you see this is a lot of space so i should move that towards the right but i've noticed that i i, I know if i just move it like if four is here and i have three two one zero one two three four five five i think this is better so I have minus to the left and then the positive to the right. This is not centralized. I'm okay with that. 
But what about the y y axis? On the y axis, I have my maximum value to be 11 that is featured there, and then the minimum to be minus 25. So minus 25. But then I'm told that we were told that we were to use 25 two centimeters to five units. But then we we're told that two centimeters is to represent five units on the y axis. So if you are to start like here, we have and um, let's say we have minus 25, then minus 20, minus 15, minus 10, minus 5, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, this is this is symmetrical. We have the same number above as we have below, but it will shift the base of our graph to this. But look at at the uppermost part, we are only going to stop around 11, 11 which will be here. But here we have 25 here, so we're going to have a whole lot of space at the top. Then I should also move that upward. So if I want to do it correctly, I think my origin should start from say here. And let me just show you that. If I'm to use that and I have my origin here, so here I will be zero, then I will be minus five, minus ten, minus fifteen, minus twenty, minus twenty-five, then I have five, ten, fifteen. I think this is better, okay? So that will put a symmetrical look to my graph. Then I can say this is my horizontal line and this is my vertical line. So this place will be the point of origin. I'm going to just do that now. I'll just clear the board. So you have my horizontal as this and, and there I have my vertical as this. You can easily get that effect by making use of a straight ruler so this is my x and here yeah, this is my y so i can choose this to be zero this is minus five minus ten minus fifteen minus twenty minus twenty five minus thirty okay that is two centimeter representing five units on the wire as is so here yeah, this is five this is 10 and this is 15 okay so each of these two centimeters have been accorded five units as requested on the scale and then on the y axis we are going to have to the positive s axis we have one two three four and five and to the negative we have minus one minus two minus three minus four and minus five okay so that is as appropriate now we now need to plot in the graph of y is equal to 4x squared minus 8x minus 21 we are going to be taking the corresponding values for example when x is minus 2 we need to locate minus 2 so yeah this is minus 2 yeah that's minus 2 and then y is 11 look at this here I'm having five smaller but six. Okay, so zero to five, that is two centimeters, consists of five boxes. Okay, and then I'm trying to look for a level, meaning that I can just take each of these boxes as a single entity. So I have one, two, three, four, and you can see five is landing. On that tick box, so I have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven will be immediately after that. So here, yeah, this is eleven, and it is the is the point of intersection of eleven going towards the left hand side, and minus two going towards the uppermost part. Here, yeah, this point of intersection is what I need to take note of as. The point of intersection of x is minus 2 and y is 11 okay so that is it this is x is minus 2 y is 11 it is this location here 
that I shaded thickly, that is that intersection point. So that's what I need to correctly put in on the graph as a point to note. So I'm to do that. You can see here. Yeah. I have one point okay then when it when x is zero y is minus 1.5 this is minus one this is minus two in this is minus one this is minus two in between the two of them here just exactly dividing them is minus 1.5 and it is the point that is corresponding to zero so i can just note it that here in the middle i have another value then when x is minus 1 x is minus 1 now this is minus 1 y is minus 9 okay since we have gotten that scale ratio so this will be coming down y being minus 9 will be just before 10 so here so this point of intersection that will be x is minus 1 and y is minus 9 so i can also note that and say this point is the point of interest the point of intersection and when x is minus 0 0.5 okay that's here y is minus 16 minus 16 is here and they are intersecting together right about here okay so that's just how to go about sorting that this is it blue ink all right then next when x is zero y is minus 21 that is this location and then next no next when x is 0 0.5 y is minus 24 so 0 0.5 here minus 24 here the intersection is this point okay so i need to just get that yeah minus 24 and 0 0.5 then when x is 1 we have minus 25 and that is located here okay you can see that this is 1 coming down here and minus 25 going here this point of intersection that is the point of interest for us then when x is 1.5 1.5 and y is minus 24 so 1.5 and again we are going back to minus 24 just like we got previously so we are seeing the point of inflection where the curve is returning back upwards that's a typical quadratic graph okay that's the minimum value and then when x is 2.0 y is minus 21 this is 2 and here is minus 21 that's why i'm noticing it here and then when 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 x is 2.5 y is minus 16 so that is here and when x is 3 y is minus 9 it will just be symmetrical to what we had initially and then when x is 3.5, y is 0, k just on the number line. And finally, when x is 4, y is 11. This is 4 and 11. Okay, so it is these blue points that we now need to join together to complete our graph. Now, I advocate that students, when you are doing this in the exam, make use of the broomstick of your or your French curve to perfectly get a very clean line just trying to get the line of best fit i'm using freehand there you can just make use of your french curve and with that you'll be able to get your graph okay it can be better than this if you are using your french curve and that means you also do well to label appropriately this is y is equal to 4s square. 
minus 8x minus 21. Okay? Then, that means we are true with the very A part, the question on the A part. But, looking at the B part, look at what we are asked to compute. Y is equal to minus 18. What we need to do here, there is no, Y is not depending on X. It's just a constant, and the constant is minus 18. Meaning that, we are going to look at where minus 18 is. This is minus 15. This is minus 20. And we have said that the increment in this particular graph is just one one unit. So minus 15 minus 16 minus 17 minus 18 is going to be here. So here I have it as okay. So this is y is equal to minus 18. But then we also need to find the value of y to be minus x. If you recollect, I dropped the table the other time that that means we just negate the value of x. For example, when x is minus 2, here, yeah, what is y? y is going to be 2. And that will come. Okay, let me use red ink for this. When x is minus 2, y is 2. And that is here. Red ink is just going to be like the graph. Let me look for a color. What color can we use? Okay, let me make use of this deep green. So, when x is minus 2, y will be minus of x. So, that means y will be 2. This is it here. Yeah? Okay. When x is minus 1.5, here, yeah, y will also be the negative of that that will be 1.5 and that is here okay because this will be relating with this okay and have it here okay when x is or oh, minus 1.0 y will now be 1, this will be here, okay, and when x is minus 0 0.5, y will be 0 0.5, so that will be here, because here, this is minus 0 0.5 for the x, and here, this is 0 0.5 for the y, okay, so that is just how we work it out. It's quite strenuous to the high, but no problem. When x is 0, y will be minus 0, and that will still be 0, just by the origin. You can see, this is how our line, our graph is going to go, but we can just still continue to the end. When x is 0 0.5, y will be minus 0 0.5, and that will be here, okay? But well, this is 0 0.5, and this between this small box is minus 0 0.5 for y. All right, and when x is 1, y will be minus 1. This is this very first box. When x is 1.5, y will be minus 1.5. That will be here in between the box, here, and here coming together. Okay, and when x is 2, y will be minus 2. When x is 2.5, y will be minus 2.5. When x is 3, y will be minus 3. Okay, when x is 3.5, y will be minus 3.5. When x is 4, y will be minus 4. All right, <laughs> those values are quite small, and then appropriately. We need to join all the dots to make a straight line. So let me just join. Okay, good. That's not bad. Then let me also take it back. All right. So I can now label this to say this is y is equal to minus x.
Now, let's take it piecewise. For the solution to y is equal to minus 18, how do we get the answer to that? We look at this point of intersection here and here, and we trace to the x axis to see the value that we get there. That will be what is the solution to this particular one. So, if I want to trace, I just want to trace and take my red ink and use that to trace. Okay, and here also. So, this value here. So, this value here and this value here are going to be the solution to this particular first question. So, the solution is x is equal to in this in the first case we, we we know that from zero to minus one those five boxes they constitute minus one meaning that each small box is 0 0.2 okay so here we have from here to here minus 0 0.2 again minus 0 0.4 again minus 0 0.6 again minus 0 0.8 and then minus 1.0 and then what we have here will be just the first box minus 0 0.2 it did not get to the second box so i can say it is in between the first box and the second box first box is minus 0 0.2 the second one is minus 0 0.4 in between them i can take as minus 0 0.3 that is on the negative as this then here i have 2.2 2.4 it is all 2.3 which happens to be in between those two ones all right and then for this for this other one this y is equal to minus x we also look at the point of intersection here and we draw down and here okay that's going to be one of the solution and the other solution will be coming here and if we also draw it up is here and we can see looking at that just the same way we evaluated this previous one we can see that x is equal to now this is minus 1 minus 1.2 minus 1.4 minus 1.6 minus 1.6 or in the other case we have 3.2 3.4 or x is 3.4 okay so those are the values that we need to note and we did we have been able to answer the question on this graph as appropriate right so that's all we are going to be having in our lecture today we hope that this will be of benefit of use to somebody out there don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of resources that you can use to enhance your academic excellence. And that's our desire that you go out and be the best. And as you do all this, we know that all will work out together for good. Until next time, God bless you.